Let's go ahead and talk about the airship body reference frame. This reference frame is fixed to the body, and so when the body pitches up or when the body yaws or rolls, it's going to pitch up as well or yaw as well or it's going to roll as well. It's a little bit different for an airship than for an aircraft, and that's mostly on where the origin of this reference frame is. For an airship, the origin lies at the center of volume. Now, something to note about this center of volume is that it is the center of volume of the envelope and not of the entire airship. Basically, we do that because the gondola is such a small volume compared to the envelope, and it just makes it easier to put it at the center of volume of the envelope because then this x-axis will actually lie on the plane of symmetry, both between the symmetry between the top and the bottom, as well as the left and the right, with the x-axis going out the nose. The y-axis would be going out the right side. And then the Z axis is going straight down following the right hand rule convention. Let's go ahead and look at the translational or in other words linear velocities, accelerations, and forces. Along this X body axis we can break the motion of the airship into the different components along the X body or the Y body or the Z body axes and when we do that we can get a velocity and acceleration terms along the X axis. We'll call this U and U dot. We can also take the total aerodynamic force and break it into a component that runs also parallel to the X body we'll call that F of A in the X direction. Then we can do the same thing with the total thrust force. We can break that up into components and we have a thrust force in the X direction. All right, looking at the Y axis. Again, we can break up the motion of the aircraft into its components and look at the velocity and acceleration along this Y axis. And we're going to go ahead and give those components the symbol of V and V dot. We can also break the arrow force up and the thrust force up into components along the Y axis. That would be F of A of Y and F of T of Y. And then last but not least, we have the Z axis. Again, we can break up the motion, the arrow force, and the thrust force along the Z axis. And the symbols we will give those is W, W dot, F of A of Z, and F of T of Z. Let's go ahead and take a look at our angular values, starting with rotation about the X body axis. We call this roll. We can have an angular velocity of P, an angular acceleration of P dot. We can have moments due to arrow and thrust loads which we call LA and LT. If the airship rotates about the Y axis, we call this pitch, and we can have an angular velocity of Q, an angular acceleration of Q dot, a moment due to arrow loads of M sub A, and a moment due to thrust of M sub T. Now let's look at the Z axis. If the airship rotates about the z-axis, we call this yaw, and we can have an angular velocity term of r, an angular acceleration of r dot, a moment due to arrow loads of n sub a, and a moment due to thrust of n sub t. Keep in mind that if we're wanting to convert these from the body reference frame to another frame like the earth frame or the wind frame, we're going to need to use a transformation matrix, but we'll talk about those in a future video. Something I want to bring up right now while we're talking about the body reference frame is gravity. One of the common mistakes that's made is to think that the gravity acts along the Z axis of the body reference frame. However, since the gravity is always pulling from the center of mass of the airship to the center of mass of the Earth, it actually acts along the z-axis of the Earth reference frame. Now the z-axis of the body frame lines up with the z-axis of the Earth frame if your airship is at a zero pitch angle, right? It hasn't pitched up or hasn't pitched down its level. 
However, the second that you pitch the aircraft up or down and it's no longer level, the Z axis of the body is no longer along that Z axis of the Earth and the gravity stays with the Z axis of the Earth, not the Z axis of the body. This means that you can break this gravity vector up into components along the X and along the Y and along the Z. All right, that's all for this video. If you like what you saw and you want to see more videos from the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and find a video you like and share it with some of your classmates or coworkers. I'll see you in the next video.